Can you believe we got a PlayStation? And we were at the front of the line at Circuit City. We totally scored. Yeah, totally, except I had to babysit so many Rugrats to pay $2.99 for this thing. So can we just put it back together and actually play with it? Not to mention, it's been two hours since I've listened to Kurt and I'm kind of going through withdrawals. chill out. And on that note, let's get the teardown started. Alrighty now, it looks like we've got six screws on the bottom of the PlayStation, so we'll take those out and then lift up the top case. Ew, this thing is like brand new and there's like 25 years of dust in there. Weird. And there's a CD-ROM drive. We'll just remove a couple cables and lift it right out. Booyah. Not only are CDs cheaper than cartridges, but they can hold way more storage. So the graphics on these games are so much cooler than Super Nintendo. Plus, the PlayStation reads each game with frickin' lasers. So tight. Okay, now I really wanna play. So let's take out the last few screws to free up the memory card controller boards. And with that out of the way, we can disconnect the power supply and lift up the inner case. Holy, Holy motherboard. motherboard. It looks like a city, a really dirty city. Yeah, this is kind of disgusting, but the motherboard is home to a 32-bit, 33.9 megahertz CPU, two megabytes of RAM, and one megabyte of VRAM. Who's the nerd now? That's a crazy amount of processing power in a home system. Like, have you seen the graphics on Ridge Racer? It's almost like real life. Great, real life. Not why I want to escape into video game land at all. And all that's left is the mega power supply, which takes up a whopping 21 percent of the PlayStation's footprint. What about the controllers? They look like quite the upgrade from the rectangular ones. Totally. No more D-pad, and this is the first time we've seen a controller with four directional buttons. But the cord is still kind of short. Kels, do you think we'll ever get wireless controllers? I hope so, because I keep getting grounded for sitting too close to the TV, in the dark, playing games, all alone, with myself, with my dog, and this seems like a good time to talk about repairability. The PlayStation got a stellar 8 out of 10 on our repairability scale, and here's why. On the upside, there are very few components involved, and everything is straightforward to remove and replace. You only need a Phillips number one screwdriver and a spudger to take the console completely apart. And the optical drive is very easy to replace. But on the downside, all of the IO ports on the back of the console are soldered to the motherboard. Boo! If you love gaming as much as KK does, and you want to travel to the future, hit that subscribe button, and then go check out all the other game console teardowns on our channel. Bye! Bye.